Hi guys, welcome to the PHP a Booker. That's Perez. It's the holiday season. Uh, oh ho ho! How are you? I I will tell you how I am in a moment. Uh oh. <laughs> <laughs> you look cool. I like your beard. Thank you. But first, a preview of some of the things we will be talking about today. Ben Affleck and his diarrhea of the mouth. Mm-hmm. Britney Spears. And her latest accusations, uh, trying to make Diane Sawyer the villain she is, should she, I mean, is she, should she, that's up to her, is she, that's up to us. Uh, okay. Chris Chris Noth and the disturbing allegations against the Sex in the City star, Kanye West has a new girlfriend and more. But first, well, you know what, I'm looking at myself here on Zoom you probably couldn't tell. Oh my, I'm like, my heart is racing. I'm a little bit scared. I'm nervous as fuck and I'm so scared because oh. we're driving to, I'm driving to Vegas. I am driving to Vegas. Well, we are because we're taking two cars. Okay. So I'm driving in one car to Las Vegas later today and I have slept less than three hours. <laughs> I have literally less than three hours of sleep that I am running on Mm. because yesterday this episode of red table talk, the Estefans premiered. Mm -hmm. And I think people could tell like when I'm when something is normal and I promote something normally, you know, like I promote all the time, but when something's really important to me, I go like fucking balls to the wall, like at a thousand. Mm -hmm. And this episode was really important to me. So I was promoting the fuck out of it everywhere, like with so many pieces of content, promoting it on YouTube, promoting it all over social media, on Instagram, on Twitter, whatever. And not only did I have that, but also I had therapy yesterday and I didn't want to cancel that. And me being me, I also had Disney on ice in the evening and I felt really guilty and I couldn't cancel Disney on ice. So I took my kids to Disney on ice, even though that sucked out almost four hours of my day yesterday. Um, so, so far, that, a lot of boohoo. No, it's all good. But then I got back and it's like, I had to prepare for this because we were recording earlier than usual. And I had to catch up on all the work that I missed and yada, yada, yada. And I'm still not packed and we have to go and I have to whatever. So how long are you in Vegas for two and a half weeks? Nice. Very nice. So I do all of Christmas there, huh? Mm -hmm. Because you don't do a whole big uh, package thing, do you? Or give her a, um, to do package you just do like a gift right for kid per kid no no more than one oh i thought because you used to do a thing where you just give your kids like a gift a week or something yeah 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 i would i mean i don't go overboard i i I only give them like a few each gotcha um but i kind of changed the rules last year because of covid Mm -hmm. i figured you know shit was so crazy like let me give them a few more than i normally do so, you know, I would say maybe each kid has seven gifts from me. Not, mm. not too much. Not all of them are very expensive. So, um, yeah. All right. <laughs> let's actually, um, let's talk about Red Table Talk. Okay. It would mean so much to me, truly, if every single person listening or watching checks out that episode. Red Table Talk, if you just go on Facebook, because it's only on Facebook, if you go on Facebook and if you type in Perez Hilton Red Table, it'll show up. I'm not on the one with Jada Pinkett Smith and her daughter. I'm on the one with Gloria Estefan and her daughter and her niece. And now, is that its own show? Because I'm really confused about that. I know you said the Estefans. I I didn't know if they were just filling in once or what's doing it. It's its own show, but Jada produces it. So, okay. She's still making money off of it. It's a spinoff. Gotcha. Um, But I was telling my therapist that, well, first of all, oh my God, first of all, did you watch it? I sent you the clip. I I watched the clips. Yeah. I didn't watch the whole. You've got to watch the whole thing because there's one segment where I like, oh my gosh. 
That's exactly what Chris Booker says to me all the time. <laughs> um, I was saying, I, I, I said in one segment, you know, well, you know, talking about my asshole -ish ways and how I used to out people back in the day. Yeah. Um, and I said, well, you know, that's what my friends and I in private would do when we would talk about. So I was just talking to my online friends, my public friends in, in public, what, what I was saying in private. And then Gloria Stefan's daughter, whom you love, she's like, they're not your friends. <laughs> and I'm like, but I, I viewed them as my friends. I yeah. Really knew. Well, and I, I think watched, I, what I realized is I think that's a true psychological problem of mine. It is. It absolutely is. It's, a, it's, really, it's, it's narcissism. It's a weird narcissism you suffer okay, from. I, I am it, a narcissist. Yes, you are. Yeah. And, but, but the whole, here's my whole problem with that. And I kind of wished I was on it with you because I would have had your back. Number one. Um, because you have apologized for this ad nauseum, um, number one. But number two, you've got this younger person. I assume she's younger. I, yeah. I liked her. I liked her spice, but I, her her fight, you know, how old would you say she is? I think she's 23, 24. Okay, so yeah, you've got this really young person, younger person. She's criticizing you from her vantage point of today, like what you know today. Now, that's not fair because when the internet happened and when it started and when you did all of this, it's impossible to have perspective on something when you're first, okay? That's like saying you know what the moonwalk is going to be like when no one's ever been on the moon before, okay? Th this, this is what she's talking about. It's like, it's easy to sit and judge and say, girl, how could you do that? Now, knowing what the internet is, what it's evolved into, you didn't know back then. You should have known better. I, I'm not going to give you a complete no, pass. I'm know. not going to say I, you no, no, right. I, I brought it up on the on the show. I did know it was wrong. And yeah, I, what, but and I think here's the insightful thing, right? I knew I was, and here's the thing where many people don't want to look in the mirror. I knew what I was doing was wrong, and so did so many others that were consuming my content and I was rewarded for it by all of these page views and all of the attention and everything. So yeah, well, I, that, well, that's another aspect of it too. You know, tell any young person that's never had fame, that's anonymous and they get it somehow, any way possible. You've seen people do sex tapes for it. Okay. You've seen people launch their fucking careers taking the most intimate moment of their life and blasting it out to the world just so they could be fucking famous. Okay. It's done all of the time. We know where it started, blah, 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 blah. Okay. You're just the same. You're just the male version of it. You, you yeah, took the absolutely. candy yeah. and, and look, I don't like the word addict. You guys are like, well, I was kind of an addict. You're more, you're like I said, you were just more of a narcissist and you, you, you were well, in, and that we're is, into the but but a narcissist like a real severe which i am i own it i am a hardcore narcissist that is a psychological okay agree that, yeah that's a, that's a that's i just didn't actual, hear it I, yeah i just it wasn't presented that way and i you know right, well whatever C calling myself an attention addict or saying you're a narcissist is two sides of the same coin you know i i guess so it's just but still one is a disorder and the other one just sounded goofy and they, they just right, made it well, sort of sound goofy. And it's well, like, I'm just like, now you kind of, well, shit, with some thanks. perspective. Well, all right. Thanks for, thanks for making things even better. I would say I have a psychological disorder. I am a severe narcissist. I accept that Dr. <laughs> Booker. Anyways, <laughs> yesterday I spoke to my actual therapist and that's one of the reasons why I did not want to cancel because there was so much to talk about. And I said, it's human nature that when we perceive that we're being attacked to put our guards up, put our defenses up. And often if, you know, we're animals just as much as we're humans, if we're being punched, our natural instinct is to either do that, uh, put our hands up to protect fight or flight or punch back. Right. Fight or flight. So I was telling my therapist because I know Gloria, and I've known her for 14 years and more than know her because I tr don't make fun of me because I have known her personally, intimately for 14 years, because I know her son, because yeah. I know her daughter, because I know her cousin, her niece, sorry. 
I truly consider them family. And because I considered them family, I felt like I was in a safe space. So I was able to really sit there and listen and receive these things that were being said to me about me and not perceive them as attacks. And there was even another guest who came on who did attack me, who I think just wanted a big moment, right? She's like, oh, yeah. I gotta get out there and I've got to fucking make, make a scene. So that, that was the other person. And I yes. saw that clip as well. Yeah. And I was like, oh God, but the whole thing is no, like, but here's something really funny because I think I, I did, I was the opposite of me. So that happened. Right. And like I said, when we first talked about red table talk, we filmed for four hours and they edited it down to a 24 minute episode. That woman, that 30 year old, that girl comes out, wah, 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 you're a hypocrite, you're a bully. <laughs> and I just sat there. Yeah. And I said nothing. I actually, and you, they did not air this, I gave her no reaction. I did not respond at all to the <laughs> point where a producer or Gloria on her own, she was either prompted or she just turned to me and said, do you want to respond? Do you have a response? And part of me was saying, was tempted to say, I have no response, but I love Gloria so much. And I'm so much of a professional that when prompted, I was like, all right, fine. I'm, I'm going to play the game. I gave them a response. And I think my response, you didn't watch this because it wasn't in the clip. No. Her response was very Perez. It was like her, her attack was very Perez, very big and blah. My response was, okay, well, you know, what you accuse me of, a lot of people could accuse you of the same thing. <laughs> Over the last few months, you have been accused of really cruel, toxic, hurtful behavior by many. And people watching could do their own research. And that's what I said. <laughs> that didn't make the show, though? It did. That made the oh, that, show. That thankfully. made the show. All right. Yeah, yeah. I didn't know who that was. So I wouldn't even have known what you're talking about. Let's yeah. talk about celebrities. Yeah. Enough yeah. about you. Yeah, it does. But anyways, <laughs> I, I forgot to elaborate on this. It would mean the, the world if everybody watched it because, you know, Facebook is and anything, TV, radio, our podcast is very numbers driven, right? So if I can show that my episode did better than others, or even if it's the most watch of this season, that would mean a lot to me. So check it out on Facebook, Perez Hilton, face uh, Red Table, if you search it that way, or just on the Red Table Talk of Stefan's page. Before we start, um... I choose to look in the I like you, choose to. True story, my kids have been taking high chew for a while, even before I got my high chew, because my children's piano teacher, she's from Japan, she loves these, and she yeah. gives them one each after every piano lesson. They're not only huge with athletes, athletes love high chew, but... Mm. Japanese people love haichu. And, DJs and, love haichu, I'll tell you per, that. And Perez Hilton's children love haichu. And this that I, I'm holding in my hand. This is an audio show for the record. I know, I was making the ASMR. I said, I'm holding in my hand. Just talk about haichu, come on. <laughs> I'm holding in my hand the fruit combos. So um, the different fruit flavors is a great alternative to gum, uh, although it's got a little bit of a gum-like texture. It was created in Japan. That's why the Japanese love mm. it. Um, it's chewy. It's just such a good candy. It's, uh, it's just a good little throw in your mouth. You got a nice pop of fun for a couple of minutes there. It's really great. I love Haichu. I'm glad I was introduced to them. Uh, really a great candy. All right, and we want you to love Haichu as well. Visit Haichu.com slash win. That's H-I-C-H-E-W slash win. Wait, sorry. Dot no, com. dot com slash win. God, that's H-I-C-H-E-W.com slash win. W I N and enter to win an exclusive bucket of high chew candy and swag. Become a member of the high chew crew, which is an exclusive club where you can receive offers and other really cool things. Go to high chew.com fudge. Go to high dash chew.com slash win. You got that everybody high. 
dash chew.com slash win. It's me. I am like on less than three hours of sleep, but I love high chew. So I will say that one of my biggest pet peeves is when a celebrity literally says something, then when the media and people react to that thing and it's not the reaction they thought they were gonna get, even though they literally said something. You got then, this all wrong, just like every other dope online. I already me, know you're gonna me, talk about Ben let, Affleck. Let I listened me, to it. Okay, I heard me, it live before okay, I saw all me, this clickbait story. Let me finish. <laughs> Recap, go ahead. Okay. Then when they don't get the reaction that, that they thought they were going to get, they said, oh, I was taken out of context. He was. How was he taken out of context? If Rez, were, listen, once how, again, this is I, you and Dave Chappelle all over again. You I, didn't listen. You well, didn't it's a listen. It's thing, but I literally had the quotes. Okay. You don't literally need the quotes. It's, I'm telling you right now, it's clickbait. It's bullshit. The guy was just talking about his problems. He didn't blame his problems on Jennifer Garner. We're talking about Ben Affleck. He didn't say she was at fault for any of these. The guy said he was in an unhappy marriage and he said he was drinking too much. He said if he would have stayed in this marriage, yes. he would have drank himself to death because he was not happy. He did okay. not, as the press right. is reporting, he but, did not blame Jennifer Garner for that. Okay. And anybody that reports that is a fucking buffoon. But what you <laughs> buffoon <laughs> i listened to it i heard it live but i, right. I get his what, literal words there's two di there's a difference you, okay, between well, well, intent okay. and literal what you do not get then or or maybe you do get but you do get because i heard it okay what you don't get and what pe what upset a lot of people is he was blaming his addiction on his marriage no he wasn't he was saying that he was in he, a bad, I, he was he, miserable yes, in his and, life. And that that yes, took him and, down a road of drinking. He didn't blame his marriage for it. He's already had, he even talked about his well-documented problems with alcohol over the years. That was Stern's exact quote. That's how they got into that. So it wasn't like he was saying, well, because of this marriage, I was drinking so much. He'd been talking about drinking no, prior to that. I, He'd been drinking for years. He was just unhappy and that started his drinking again yes he was unhappy because of the marriage she said and that's Perez, why he, come he on this drinking. is this is ridiculous you guys ben affleck's right this is clickbait media he's right it's just clickbait i heard clickbait i heard it i listened with my own two ears he did not blame jennifer garner he didn't well you're he not didn't. You're not, but that's what the media is claiming. Not even the media people. People are dopes. Once again, how many times do I have to explain to you that right. people on the that internet are fucking stupid? They can't think for themselves. They take he little teeny tiny clips and take them out of context. And that's what happened here. Right. Did he literally say what you said? Yes, he did. But is that what he meant? Was that his intent? No. If you listen to the interview, it was not his intent. I'm sure he feels badly that it's perceived that way. And if I was him, I would say that, but that's not what he was saying. But he wasn't blaming he her for he, anything. He, he literally said two things. He said, like you said, that he was so unhappy that instead of leaving, he decided to stay in that for his children. And he was drinking a bottle of like, I forget what it was, scotch. I think scotch, scotch or whiskey yeah. or something. A bottle of scotch a day, he said. Um, and he also said, in addition to that, that if he was still in the marriage, that he would probably still have a hardcore drinking problem. So the only That's not way blaming the marriage, it's blaming the drinking problem. He had the drinking problem prior to being married. He was just unhappy. His unhappiness led him to drinking marriage. more. He wasn't blaming the marriage. My God, he talked a ton about his problems with alcohol. You're 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 just being one of these people online that that just see things. The, the it's like you want to see it one way and one no, way I only can see it more than one way. But he literally said these things. Perez, stop being so literal. You don't need I'm to be literal. literal. He was person. telling a story. He was just talking off of the cuff. He wasn't blaming anyone. He didn't blame anyone. 
He's even out there now saying again, trying to like clarify, yes. listen, when people talk and say things, so, especially him, he's, you know, he's his own worst enemy. I'll just be honest with you. The guy He'll get talking and he just, da, 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 da. he is a little bit of a narcissist. He just keeps talking and talking and talking and talking. And he like, you can hear him like winding up and winding down and he's his own worst enemy. But I still, with that said, in my heart of hearts, don't believe he was blaming his ex-wife. He was blaming I, his addiction. Well, according to reports, Jennifer Garner's not happy about what he said. Well, she shouldn't be because people are making this a story and it's, and it's going to get back to his kids and this and that. It's why I'm shocked he even did Stern in the first place. I don't know why he did it. I don't know. I don't know why he'd do any press at this point, you know, talking about his life or movies and such. He, you know, he said when he got back together with Jen, there'd been some conversation about, you know, the last time and how he would do it again and he wouldn't share so much. And he's not telling stories about how they met this time or how they got back together, all that, blah, 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 blah. I'm Then I see he's going to go on Stern. And as soon as I read that, I was like, can't wait to see how he puts his foot in his mouth because it's going to happen. And there it is. However, I still believe intent is everything. And I don't think he had any intention at throwing well, any shade at his ex-wife. I will just say this because you're clearly going to disagree with me. Because I heard it. Okay. All of it. Okay. Nobody is to blame for a person's addiction. Not even that person. Okay. Or a situation, you know, like, and that's what he made it seem like. It, he literally said, I was unhappy in this marriage. And because of that, I was drinking. And if I was still in this marriage, I would still be drinking. <laughs> So the only way that many people interpret that is, oh, it's because of Jennifer Garner that he's drinking. Whereas or many people drinking. cannot think for themselves. Okay, right, many okay. people, right, 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 right. many already, people, you already said this. I many people go online and they take a narrative that's presented to them and they pass it off as fact. And they start thinking that way because some people aren't smart enough to think on their own or even take the time to listen to what was said. That's the case here. End of story to me. All right. Well, many, including me, disagree with you. <clears throat> All right. We're going to talk about Britney Spears. I uh, I hosted the Lumineers special for iHeartRadio and Live by Live last night. I, I yeah. don't know if you're a fan of that band. It's, that music's like right up my alley, folksy. Yeah, no. I like pop. that music. I just know uh, that one song of theirs, though. Well, you know a few. Ophelia, you know, Hey Ho or Ho Hey, whatever that. Hey Ho. Um Gloria, Glo oh, oh, yeah. oh yeah, that's you've been on my mind since uh, the flood. But anyhow, just the nicest. It, I had heard from other people that they're very, they're kind of maybe hard and not not an easy interview. Meanwhile, <laughs> they were probably the easiest interview interview of my life. Um, just super super good dudes, and they've got a new album uh, that it doesn't come out till like the fifteenth of next year. But I've, I've got it. It's it's awesome and. Um, but yeah, I just wanted to share with everybody because they're just such nice, nice dudes and I'm, I'm a pretty big fan. So Lumineers. Can an act like that, I would imagine so, can they still be successful even oh, yeah. if pop radio doesn't play them? Absolutely. They, you know, that's one of those, they're like Kings of Leon. They're like one of those bands that just has that built in folksy rock audience that, that probably, it's wild that they have hits because they do have like, you know, three, four hits. Um, like 10 on the alternative chart total, but um, they, they're such good musicians that they've, they've got that, that real following those people that don't listen to the radio. It's, it'd be, and if it did, it'd be like triple a radio. You know what I mean? Like that adult, we don't have a good triple a station in Los Angeles. It'd be cool if we did, but we don't, uh, but they're great. They were great. All right. Well, let's talk Britney Spears. Okay. You know, she's been keeping herself busy and active on social media so much so that she deleted one of her posts that got a lot of attention. She was in that post criticizing a bunch of people, including her father, her former manager, and Diane Sawyer. She said a lot of things, so I won't read the whole thing. It was like multiple pages on notes uh, that she posted, but I'll read you just the Diane Sawyer part. She said, do we dare forget the Diane Sawyer interview in my apartment almost 20 years ago? We do dare. 
<laughs> we do dare, Brittany. We're not sitting around thinking about your Diane Sawyer interview from two decades ago. Sorry. Well, a lot of people are because it was prominently featured in the first documentary that came Fair out enough. earlier Fair enough. this year. So it's front of mind for many. You know. Uh, so uh, she said, what was with the you're in the wrong approach? Geez, and making me cry? Seriously, though, I lived in my apartment for a year and never spoke to anyone. My manager put that woman in my home and made me talk to her on national television. And she asked if I had a shopping problem. When did I have a shopping problem? Something I never shared when I had that breakup years ago was that I couldn't talk afterwards. I talking about her breakup with Justin Timberlake. Um, she says, I never spoke to anyone for a very long time. I was in shock. Pretty lame of my dad and three men to show up at my door when I could hardly speak. Two days later, they put Diane Sawyer in my living room. They forced me to talk. I would like to say now, ma'am, I'm a Catholic slut. You want to join me at mass and I can serve your husband my certificate on shopping for anonymous players? I should spend a thousand dollars if I want every day of my life <laughs> and she can kiss my white ass. Mm. And she made a point of mentioning that she was so young then, only 22 years old. So, okay, a few things. Yes, yes, 22 years old is very young. Yeah. But big but at 22 years old, if I did not want to do something, my mother and my managers would not have been able to force me to do something I did not want to do. It's like talking. You yeah. want to bring them into the house? You want to welcome them in? I'm not going to say anything. So Brittany chose to do that interview. She was not forced. Right. Well, and what was her state of mind back then? I'm sure it was fragile. She said she didn't leave the house. She this was after the breakup? Of, with Justin Timberlake. Yeah. That was probably pretty traumatic. Especially because she allegedly cheated on him. And I'm sure she felt immense grief and mm. all of those things. And, you know, yeah. I, I said this. Not easy. I said this when that first documentary came out. So many people are trying, and it sort of ties into what you said at the beginning when we were talking about, you know, how things were different back then. So many people want to make Diane Sawyer to be this villain, and she's not, you know? She was and is a respected journalist who treated Britney, here's the thing, she treated Britney like any, like a politician, she treated Britney like a politician in that when you interview the president of the United States, you want to ask the tough questions. That's what good journalists do. Right. They and, ask and, and good subjects to take that a step further, know how to combat, I'll say it, combat any question. And I've been in that position where I work for one of those shows and they say, you know, hey, if you don't ask the question, don't get back on that plane. And I've heard it. I they literally really said that. Oh, absolutely. Really? Don't you even think about getting back on that plane if you don't ask that question. Oh, yes. Wow. Oh, like yes. That really, I should write a book about that. That, that exact that, sentence happened. Ver, My like, executive wow. producer. Yes. Mention. Say who? I, I won't say. No. <laughs> Saving it for the book. Wow. The book that nobody will read. But um. Yeah, no, so I, I get that. And it's all about, you know, like you've always said, you're just doing your job. And it's part of the job, asking the question. That was the part of the job that I didn't like, though. Yeah. I, I I much rather, uh, I enjoyed this version of entertainment better than I did that version. Because most of the things you asked there, I don't think anybody even cares about. You know, I'd rather just ask you the question here or, or you know, or maybe take the other, like Ben Affleck, take the other angle of things. Cause I see it for what it is. I think everyone is dead wrong. Um, but you know, that's not how it's presented and that's not what gets, what gets clicks. So I don't know. I don't know why Britney's, I mean, I guess because of the special, but if I was her, I wouldn't talk about the special. I wouldn't, I wouldn't give it any light. 
you know? Well, um, I mean, like I said, in a way, she's going through another breakup now. She's going through the breakup, not just of her conservatorship. That's a good, that's a good point. But she's also going through the breakup of her family, which is even worse than the breakup of Justin Timberlake because she feels betrayed by yeah. those that were meant to protect her, her mother, well, her brother, her father, her sister. Yeah. But all those people. Is that healthy? It is to, if it, if it's to put it out for, online. It's, if it's, it's healthy not. for her, if it's she not. thinks it's healthy for it's her. It's not. Well, she, okay, <laughs> you might think it's not, but she thinks it is. I know. I know. I, I'm just saying it's not. Um, well, it's not the answer. Her father is responding to that. He released a statement through his lawyer and he says, Mr. Spears has no idea what Miss Spears is talking about. <laughs> Jamie never set up any interview with Diane Sawyer and was not present for any such interview. Hmm. He had nothing to do with Britney's career at this point and was completely uninvolved in this interview. Mr. Spears hopes that she continues to seek the help that she needs to stay safe and healthy, adding that he loves his daughter very much and wishes her nothing but the best. So, yeah. well, it's almost everything I just said applies to him too. And I get it's a statement that he's putting out through blah, blah, blah to shield himself, but he's being equally as in the wrong well, somehow because you're participating. Well, well, at this point, I understand him, right? At this point, he's like, well, I'm dead to my daughter. Even though I feel like I only had her best interest at heart, she right. wants nothing to do with me. So I'm going to at least clear my name. Right. I'm going to de defend myself when necessary. Yeah. So I think that's what he thinks. Do you believe him or her? I believe both of them, meaning... I don't believe he was there. I, I think he's probably being accurate. And it was such a long time ago. And Brittany has been through so much. She probably does believe. She that, believes that. Yeah. Yeah. I don't think she made probably it Probably the up. right answer. Yeah. I think she really believes that yeah. he was there. Yeah. So, all right. Let's keep it moving. And other scandalous, salacious news. This was wild. Oh, my God. I don't listen to any other podcasts but ours. And... I don't Be honest, you don't even listen to ours. I nope. listen to ours. <laughs> well, no, I listen to ours every week. I watch it on YouTube. Oh, you because, do? Because I'm live chatting with people during every premiere. Oh. And YouTube people are like, Booker said he was going to come on one day and he's never come on. I'll come on. Yeah, you liar. You will not. I'll go on once. You just remind me. Every, if, I'm, if I'm around, just tell me when you're doing it and I'll jump on. Every Tuesday at 9 a.m. Okay. Every Tuesday at 9 a.m. on YouTube. Anyways, so I, a friend of mine texted me and it was really, I'm grateful because, you know, I love finding out something as soon as it happens. And as soon as this happened, I'm like, oh shit, this is going to get headlines. So I was able to publish an article before anybody else did. So I, it wasn't really like a scoop because it was set on a podcast but i like you know being the first with something and on this podcast of hers she didn't have any guests on it was just her talking for like 40 minutes she really went into detail about everything that her ex-husband did to her Who are we talking about bethany frankel from the real housewives of new york and from skinny girl and other things she's very well known sure I just um, didn't know who you were talking about. Oh, sorry. I thought I said, I mentioned I don't it. think so. Oh. <laughs> Maybe anyway, you did and I missed anyway, it. Uh, we are tired too. I'm very Beth tired. Bethany Frankel. So I guess she doesn't have a gag order anymore. Or if she does, she doesn't care because her daughter, she revealed, I think her daughter's 11 or 12. Her daughter has her own attorney. Court appointed hmm. that represents her best interests. And the daughter now is able to decide what parent she spends time with. And she just does not want to spend time with her dad. Oh. So she could say whatever she wants and it will not affect her custody of her daughter. Sure. She's claimed that her ex, well, obviously we knew that she, the, the ex would refuse 
to leave the marital home, which she bought and was under her name. Mm -hmm. But she even took it a step further to say that there was forgery, that um, she was illegally recorded. She was stalked. Somebody was following her. Um, uh, Let me read to you some of the allegations. Forgery, hacked emails, being followed, being illegally recorded, stalking, harassment, like everything. It was just wild. And the wildest, here's the thing, right? Like, I loved it for all of the salaciousness. And I like Bethany. I hope she does, if she listens, because you never know who's going to listen. I hope she doesn't take this the wrong way. She was making it seem like she's going to like let everybody in on the big secret and help everybody. And I'm like, this is it. This is your big secret, your big reveal. (laughs) She was naive and trusting and thought, oh, my husband to be is never going to fuck me over. So she signed a shitty prenup. She signed that's a, it, that, right? That, oh, wow. You Thanks. signed a pretty she that's your well, duh. Don't sign a fucking shitty prenup. Yeah. Like protect yourself. View like, like she said, you have to view it like a business. And in, if you're going into a business agreement with somebody, which is what marriage is, sure, you're not gonna get a sign a shitty prenup, especially if you're somebody like her that had so much more money than the husband. So but hearing her talk about everything that she went through, that was pretty wild. Hmm. Speaking of wild and just shocking and disappointing, Chris Noth, the actor, has been accused not of sexual harassment, but of sexual assault, rape by multiple women, two women who came forward to the same publication who do not know each other and wait a minute two people that don't know one another went to the same publication to give the same story i'm already starting to smell some sort of what is that odor oh bullshit that's what it is come on well are you buying this at the same time right around the release of a movie tv show. i mean tv show (laughs) it is peculiar that they both went to the same publication but that is peculiar that's rather peculiar but this is not the first time that he's been accused of violent behavior. Hmm. Back in the 90s, his ex-girlfriend, supermodel Beverly Johnson, also accused Chris Noth of sexually assaulting her. Are you a so, supermodel? If I have no idea who you are, because I don't think that's a supermodel. She's an iconic model. Okay? Really? Okay. Oh yeah, I don't know that name. No, I, I no, I was being serious. I've never heard oh. of that name before. Well, one of the reasons you probably don't know her name, uh, maybe uh, sorry, let me make sure I got the right name. <laughs> one of the reasons is I gave you the wrong name. No, I, no, that was, I don't know. I was just asking. I've you know, never that, heard sorry, of this name before. That was, I wanted to make sure that was the right name. Uh, you know, she, the '90s were very difficult for women in media that were women of color, black models black actresses there just weren't they didn't no, i feel a, you i just you know using the term supermodel implies right. that you are a cindy crawford you are so, a because of a lister the the the, the you know me the white supremacy and racism and white privilege and all that black supermodels or black models did not have as many no no no, no. you're taking i mean right. look naomi I'm, campbell was black um, yes there, what, tyra right. banks was black there, i mean those are super models because right, i know fine. who they are that's beverly, all i'm saying okay, i'm not saying right, that fine. she's not important i'm just saying beverly, you can't call someone okay, a supermodel right, okay. unless they fall into the category fine. of a supermodel she was a top model, model. she fine. was a work she was a top working model okay i'll take that and in the 90s, she said that he threatened to kill her, that she, that he violently attacked her and also sexually assaulted her. Hmm. So now this is the third, there's three women that have all said he, he's done these things. And I am inclined to believe accusers, you know? I don't think Beverly Johnson back in the 90s would have made this up. You know, she was dating him also. It wasn't even just some random accuser. She was his girlfriend. I mean, and 
And like you said a moment ago with Brittany, maybe she thinks that's what happened. I, I don't know either way. I'm just listening to the report. All right. We're going to set about- it up with a very interesting thing that two people came to the same publication at the same time around the release of a new television show. It just seems sort of odd to well, me. That's what but- he said. And he's denying these allegations. I should say that. You should. Let, let me that's read fair. To, let me read to you what he said. He said, no, yeah, I got it. Yeah, we uh, got it. We get the point. Yeah, he denied the accusations. All right. Billy Eilish shared the shocking revelation actually also on Howard Stern mm-hmm. that she started watching adult films porn when she was just 11 years old. And she said it really destroyed my brain. Um, she said, you know, she used to be very porn positive, but now has really, she thinks porn is an awful thing now. And yada, yada, yada. And yeah, you know, it's good luck up, taking on porn. That's like screaming into the wind. It set up all these unrealistic expectations. And, you know, you really should not learn about sex through porn and yada, yada, yada. And it's just one of the many reasons why I, I really do not think I will let my children have cell phones or laptops. But they get to it anyhow. How? To porn? How will they get it without a cell phone or a laptop? Well, I mean, haven't you? Don't you have? Didn't you have a problem with that or something at some point? No, not a, not until I was like a senior in high school. But no, I mean, with like your kids, they've never found their way to porn or anything like that. No. Oh. No. Oh, okay. <laughs> You're like, no. So they've never like, you, you don't have to like put block. I mean, they're never on the computer. Like you don't worry about them like going onto a computer and like stumbling because well, they have... all do. Oh God. Yeah. But that's why I'm not going to let them have, I mean, no, they're not having it. Hmm. Oh God. Anyways, craziness, craziness with Billie Eilish. Um, the more music news, uh, Tory Lanez, the musician who allegedly shot Megan Thee Stallion, had a pre-trial hearing. His trial is going to move forward. I did this panel discussion recently where I spoke to um, you know, a Black blogger, and I asked, because Tory Lanez is Black and Megan Thee Stallion is Black, and I was curious to see if they had a different perspective than me. If Tory Lanez is found guilty in this gun related crime because he is Canadian, should he be permanently banned from entering the United States? I say, yes, this black blogger said no. So I wonder if it's a black white thing. What do you think? It's probably an individual person thing. Like what's your belief? I I don't know what the law states, Um, you know, I think was he charged here? Yeah. He was because charged here, the trial was here. he? Because I thought, yeah, the, wasn't it, this it, the thing when she it happened in Los Angeles when they were leaving a Kylie Jenner party? Right, and but at first she didn't cop to it. Was do I have that memory right? Yeah, at like first, she, she was like, no, 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 she this. Yeah, she didn't blame him at first. <laughs> then she did. What yeah. a mess. <laughs> do you think he should be banned from entering? If you shoot somebody, yeah. I mean, I think if you shoot somebody and you're not American, you should be shipped the hell out of our country. Yes. Sure. All right. You know, you shouldn't be, uh, I wouldn't think you should be allowed to make money here either, but it's probably happened a million times. So, you know, well, it's a gun country, baby. They're going to protect that gun before they're going to protect her. You know that. Speaking of musicians, Travis Scott has been removed as a headliner from Coachella. uh, This really coming April. I'd forgotten he was a headliner at Coachella. Yeah. And check this out. His agent, seeing the future and the writing on the wall, told the promoters, AEG Golden Voice, that if they did not drop him, that Travis Scott would perform for free. Like he wouldn't even want or request his fee. Wow. Which is probably multi millions of dollars. You know, I don't know how many, but they're like, nope. So now they, do have to pay some fee, a kill fee, which is about 20, yeah. which is 25% Ooh. of what he would have made. But that's not that much. Uh, they can afford that. And he's a big, people view him as a risk having yeah. him 
headline now that yeah. kind of sh show coachella will be all right <laughs> Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I don't think people understand how enormous that thing is. How many people go? They're going to be just fine yeah. <laughs> paying that 25%. They're not going to lose a dime. They could cancel Coachella for the next decade, then have a show and probably recoup all that money. It's so big and wow. so ridiculously expensive. Well, speaking of uh, Travis Scott, his baby mama, Kylie Jenner, had a baby shower at Sister Chloe's house, but you will not be seeing any photos of that. Okay. All the attendees, family and friends were told do not post pictures because that would not be a good look. Smart. Also in Card Jenner, Disick West World, Kanye West. What do you think about this? Okay. What okay. do you think about this? Here I am. Kanye, Give it to me. Kanye West publicly is begging his wife to get back together with him but privately he has a new girlfriend hmm. does that make sense to you yeah in kanye's world sure well, <laughs> yeah if, it does <laughs> if i'm kim kardashian i would be pissed off at that like you are telling me to get back together with you and you have a new girlfriend it's uh you know how real is that I don't know. How real is any of it? I don't know. Uh, well, according to reports, he's dating this model named Venetria and he likes her so much. They're not, they're not exclusive. Okay. All right. But he <laughs> likes her so much that she, that she, he's introduced her to his friends and they've hung out, not just the two of them alone. So mm. Mm. there's that. All right. Mm. In other wacky news, Kyle Rittenhouse, that kid who murdered people in self-defense, um, he's been doing the media rounds, the conservative media rounds, appearing on, uh, you know, in, in independent talk shows and podcasts and all that. Like, why? What does he get from doing all of this media? I don't get it. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I, I, don't, uh, I, I think you get empowered by other stupid people and you start to believe what other stupid people tell you to do that you should do. And you're a stupid person yourself and you just go all in on the stupid. That's my guess. How about that? No. Well, I, seems plausible to me. I don't get it. All right. Uh, speaking of housewives from the New York show with Bethany Frankel to Beverly Hills, the daughter of, and I got a lot of criticism for this. The daughter of Lisa Rinna, Delilah Hamlin, made a funny, t a funny TikTok video saying, unrealistic things I want for Christmas for my parents to pay for my trauma therapy. Her daughter is, Lisa Rinna's daughter is 23 years old and a working model. Mm -hmm. And she suffered an overdose earlier this year. She overdosed allegedly on, I think, Xanax. And she publicly said she wants her parents to pay for her therapy. Even though I'm sure at 23 and being a model, she could probably pay for it herself. Well, I see that as a tongue in cheek post. Okay. You do? Once again, Captain Literal. Here we go. Again. I am Captain Literal. <laughs> You're so ridiculous. You need to... You need to address this in therapy because it's you you can't take anything out of context. You take everything out of context is, is the problem. If people literally say things. <laughs> anyways. <laughs> yeah, I'm telling you, dude. Somebody, <laughs> okay, just... so somebody close to Lisa Rinna said exactly what you said, which is she just was trying to be funny. Yeah. Well, the first line was, unrealistic okay that's the first word that you said which means i'm joking this is ridiculous but i'll give you an answer there's my answer and now dummies are reporting this as like she said this like she was joking <laughs> clearly unrealistic is the key word she literally said it there's your word literal literally said it <laughs> Well, I think it, it could also be interpreted. It could also, <laughs> it could also be interpreted as by fun. someone that's looking for clicks. You're right. It could no. be interpreted different. Yes. It could be. <laughs> Come on. It, let me finish. It could be interpreted as unrealistic because 
her parents are not paying for her therapy and they wouldn't. That's why she would consider it to be unrealistic. Anyways, I'll just state this. You know, my kids, when they're older, I'm not going to pay for, like, if my kids want to start a business, get investors. I'm not going to give you money to start your business, okay? (laughs) But if there's something that's, you know, medical related, I would pay for that. Okay. Speaking of medical related, Army Hammer has left treatment where he's been going to get better for his addictions, his multiple addictions from alleged substance abuse to alleged sex addiction. And I'm proud of him. He stuck it out and he went there for six months. You know, it's not something that's not what you you don't do that for show. You don't do that just for appearances. Six months is not show. Six months is I'm working on myself. Yeah. So I wish Hammer well. And finally, before we take some calls, Lala Kent from Vanderpump Rules is so upset at her ex now, Randall Emmett. She's putting him on blast for everything even revealing that the engagement ring he got her is fake. (laughs) Apparently she got it. She went and and had it reviewed and she thought it was worth hundreds of thousands of dollars. It's worth only teens, like less than $20,000. And apparently I did not know this. She found out, I didn't even know this is a thing. Brown, did you know there are brown diamonds? I think there's all different, sure, different colors of diamonds, yeah. It was a brown diamond that they turned into a clear diamond. Oh, really? Treatment. Huh. So, yeah, it's not worth that much, and she was not happy about that. (laughs) All right, before we we take some calls, bum, bum, bum. Whether you own or rent, GEICO makes it easy to bundle home and car insurance. Having a home is hard work. So get a quote at geico.com today. Easy. Let's only do one call because we need to save calls for our calls episode. Okay, here we go. Hey, Perez and Booker. It's Claire from Detroit again. Um, Love your podcast, of course. I don't know. And I love both of you. But I was really, I was a little bothered, Booker, by what you said about, you know, how people should be shot <clears throat> people should be shot if they like if they rob you know a store or whatever and i just think this country is such a big gun problem we shouldn't really be just like throwing you know comments around like that i don't know like there was just a big shooting didn't we play this game. i kind of feel like we put we played this but yeah no i, I that once again tongue-in-cheek um but i do think people need to defend their property and we do have a problem i think we also said that we should electrocute them. And I also believe I said that we should uh, electrify the floors so we could shock people, tase them, I said, and then we should electrify. Them. I've said a lot of crazy things, so don't take all of them so literally. This episode will be called Literally Without Question today. <laughs> but uh, hey, happy holidays, everybody. Do we have one more before Christmas or no? Yes, we're, we're doing another episode next week. Okay, okay. So all right. thank you everybody for all of your support share our show perezpodcast.com or on youtube on the perez hilton youtube call us 800-721-1185 see you guys next week bye guys